In this video, I'm going to be going over a variant of mesh analysis. This approach is very similar to the mesh that's typically taught. However, you avoid these kinds of exceptions that you have to do like super mesh and complications when it comes to current sources. To follow this approach, the first step is to define a current for every loop. Second, you have to write the KVL for each loop and you use Ohm's law for resistor voltage drop. And for current sources, you define a variable voltage across them so that way you can complete your KVL. Next, you have to define the current sources, voltage and current labels of your circuit in terms of your loop currents. And the last step is just math, because by the time you've completed steps 1 through 3, you'll have a solvable system of equations that you can put into a calculator or solve by hand. So to begin the problem, I'm going to draw my current loops. So this is going to be loop I1. I tend to prefer to go clockwise and keep that consistent. This is going to be loop 2. And this is going to be my loop I3. So now I have to write my KVLs for each loop. And let's begin with the I1 loop. So for a KVL loop, the point of KVL is saying that if you begin at one place in your circuit and then you end back at the same place, the change between where you started and where you ended is going to be zero. So you're just adding up all these potentials as you go through the loop and stating that it must be equal to zero because you're back at the same place. So let's begin our KVL at this corner. So starting this I1 loop, the first component we see is this four volt source. And we're gonna call this a negative four volt potential. Now the reason why we're calling it a negative 4 volt potential is because the current is seeing that negative terminal first, so we're going to write negative 4 volts. And when we see a positive terminal, we're going to write positive. And being consistent about which way you define the voltage drop across your components is very important. Some books and videos will recommend doing the opposite way, and if you are consistent and completely opposite, the answers are going to work out just fine. So the next component we see is our 7 amp current source. Now for this component, we don't know the potential across a current source, so now we have to define a variable potential across the source in order to complete our loop. So let's go ahead and call this V1, and I'll say this is plus minus in this direction. So since I defined V1 in this direction, we see the positive side of V1 first. So we're going to say plus V1. So now we've reached the 3 ohm resistor. The voltage across the 3 ohm resistor can be related through Ohm's law. However, in mesh analysis, things get a little bit interesting. So the current that's going through the 3 ohm resistor isn't just I1, but it's actually the superposition of I1 and I2. So what that means is that part of the current that's going through in one direction is I1, and part of the current that's going the other direction is I2. So if we have this current right here, let's just make this IA, for example, IA is going to be equal to one part, which is I1, because I1 is going the same direction as IA, minus I2, which is going the opposite direction. So it cancels out part of that I1 effect, and you're left with that net current IA that's actually going through your 3 ohm resistor. So that's the idea of superposition of your mesh loop currents. So keeping that in mind, the voltage across this resistor is going to be V is equal to I times R. We're going to say plus three, that's our R value. And like we said, the current is going to be the subtraction of these two. And because we're in the I1 loop, we're going to say I1 minus I2 in this case. And now we're down here. And this is back to the same potential that we started. So this is the full loop. And because we're back at the same place that we started, we can say this is equal to zero. So now we can move on to the I2 loop. So let's start here again. And we're going to be following the path of I2. So if we begin here, the first thing we see again is that 3 ohm resistor. Now, because we're in I2's loop and not I1's loop, what I'm going to write in instead is I2 minus I1, because that's the net current effect that gives me a positive polarity in this direction. So the next thing we see is the 1 ohm resistor. So we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to say plus 1. And again, we're in the I2 loop. I'm going to write I2 minus I3. So now we've reached a dependent current source, and we don't know the potential across a dependent current source. So we have to define our own potential here in order to finish this loop. So let's go ahead and write plus minus V2. So now as I2 goes to the current source, we see the positive side of V2 first. So we're going to write plus V2. And now we're back at our initial position, and we can say that this is equal to zero. So now we can move on to our final current loop, and this is going to be I3. And let's start at this position right here. The first component that the I3 current loop reaches is going to be this 2 ohm resistor. And we also have this potential Vx. 
So what I'm going to do is define Vx later and write the Ohm's law equation for the potential across that component. So unlike the previous resistors where we had multiple current loops going through and we had to subtract those currents, for the 2 ohm resistor, we can actually just write that this potential is going to be 2 multiplied by I3 because there's no current going on the other side here like that. So the next component we see is the 1 ohm resistor. Now, because we're in the I3 loop, we're going to say plus 1, and here we're going to write I3 minus I2, so opposite of what we did in the I2 loop. So now the next thing we see is our current source, and we have this V1 label over here. Because I3 is going into that negative of my v1 label i'm going to have negative v1 right here and now we're back to our initial position and we can say this is equal to zero and we finish step two so the next thing i want to do is to find my current sources in terms of my loop currents so for instance this seven amp source tells us that we have seven amps going in this direction but we can describe that in terms of our loop currents so what we can write for that component is that seven is equal to the current that's going in the same direction minus the current that's going in the opposite direction so in this case i3 is moving in the same direction as the seven amps so we'll say i3 minus i1 which is moving against it so now let's do the same thing for dependent to the x source so in this case we don't have two currents we only have i2 and i2 is moving in the opposite direction of 2 v so what I can write is that 2vx is equal to the negative of my I2 current. So now the only thing we have left to do is to define our voltage label in terms of our loop current. And that voltage label that we need to define is our Vx term. And we can relate that Vx term through Ohm's law by my I3 loop current and my 2 ohm resistor. Now the tricky part with this one is the polarity matters a lot. We have to take into account which way this Vx is referenced. So we know that in a resistor, current flows from the positive side to the negative side. In order to be consistent with that, when I define Vx, I have to write that Vx is equal to negative to i3 because right now i3 is moving from the negative to the positive terminal but that's opposite of what it actually would be doing so we have to keep in mind that this negative sign is extremely important when you're writing this equation at this point we completed steps one through three and all we have left to do is solve this system of equations this could be done by hand however for the sake of time i'm going to punch this into a system of equations calculator to get our final answers the result of solving this system gives us that I1 is equal to negative 19 over 2, I2 is equal to negative 10, I3 is equal to negative 5 over 2, V1 is equal to 5 over 2, V2 is equal to 9 volts, and Vx is equal to 5 volts. And that is the solution to the problem.